whenever you're checking booleans, you don't have to be this verbose. You can easily just leave out the equals true and it will be the same, but this time it's much cleaner. Next. All right, here we have one of the super nasty ones uh, using if else statements. Basically, whenever you see arrow shaped code or Christmas tree shaped code, you should regard that as a code smell. Absolutely. The only thing that is uh, nice here is that we're using mayfly variables. So that's basically any variable that is defined right before it's used. And we see that here and we see that here. And you can absolutely refactor this to much, much more readable code. One of the huge issues with this type of nested if else statements is whenever you have a condition, if you have more nested if else conditions, conditions inside of it, it will move further and further apart from its corresponding else. So let's just uh, take a second to refactor this to use got clauses fail fast instead. So let's move all these business rules up to the top. And then we can basically just do this instead, uh, slap some ifs around these and throw. And just a second, then I will show you. And there we go, much more readable, no nested if else crazy, just readable code. It's quite often you would want to assign a Boolean value based on some expression. And here we just want to check, does our current permissions contain files.create? But this implementation is super verbose, you can do this much simpler. There we go, it's the exact same outcome. Again, here we have one of those nasty if else statements and we can really make this a whole lot simpler. And there we go. An issue with conditional logic is that you sometimes have to know what the different numbers and strings represent. So for example, here we have if h is uh, greater or equals to 16, you have no clue what this 16 means. So to make your code much cleaner, you can essentially just give this condition a name by extracting it to a variable. And for this, we'll just uh, name this. So the legal drinking age or to buy alcohol in Denmark is 16, right? But you would have no way of knowing this if we just had the 16. And then you can obviously get rid of all of this as well. And there we go, much simpler and easier. We see this all the time that you want uh, some input to have a default value. And one way of doing it is just to pass it up here, but that's not always something you'd want to do. Sometimes you can do this instead and it's much cleaner, easier and readable. So sometimes you need to access a member of a variable and you are not sure if the variable is null or not. Accessing the variable before checking if it's null will definitely throw a null exception. So this is one common way of making sure that you can actually access a member of a variable, but this is also super verbose. Instead, you can use the null conditional operator and the null coalescing uh, operator, and it will look like this instead. This basically says, let's check if it's null, if it's not, then we can access this member. Otherwise, we just can return false. There's also another way you can do these checks. And let me just back up a bit here. So here you can essentially just do this instead. And that will work the exact same. This is not a super common use case, but sometimes you want to check a couple of different values if any of them has a value and any of them are true. So one way to do this is basically what I've done here. You just say, okay, this value that might be null, let's check if it has a value and then use that value. If it's false, then we go, then we just move on to the next variable and we move on to the next and so on. But this is super verbose. You can do this much simpler and easier. And there we go. So these two examples are the exact same. One is just awful and the other is awesome. And that is it. So I hope you liked it.